to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel scattered abroad in the name of Jehovah our Creator and Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of all the Jews and the Israelites in the earth. I'm bringing you greeting and today's lesson we're going to be looking at the Ashkenazi, the ones who live in Israel and uh, some of the other converts to Judaism and where their origins are and some say they descend from the Khazars but we're going to look at the Bible first and also who they are in the earth today so that's some of what they look like to these Caucasians because they're different tribes within that race just like we have 12 tribes of Israel you have 12 sons of um, Ishmael each of their own tribes okay so Genesis 10 verse 2 Ashkenazi we're gonna look at him and Japhet so the sons of Japhet Genesis 10 verse 2 the sons of Japhet Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tiras so notice the war that's coming to end all wars include the Japhetites so the people who call themselves Shemites, like the Ashkenazi, they're not Shem's children, they're Japheth's children. So you have to group them according to their Bible names. Even though people change their names, they can't change their looks, they can't change their behaviors. So Revelation 20 verse 8, And shall go to and deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom... Is as the sand of the sea so it's going to be the war to end all wars so Japhetites were slave traders modern day Edomite Greco Romans you can see David Duke's videos and we're gonna look at one of that too the shocking rule the shocking Jewish rule in slavery part one what Jewish historians see so that fulfills Ezekiel 27 13 Javan, Tubal, and Meshek, they were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. So they were slave traders. We're going to come back to that. So the Khazars are also known as Ashkenazi. All right. So in the sequel to the history of the Jews, uh, this is page 734. No, that's not it. Let me see. Okay, I'm sorry. Page 731. So, it says there's a kingdom, chapter 7, sequel to the history of the Jews. A kingdom called Khozar. Some people spell it K-H-O-Z-A-R. Some people spell it K-H-A-Z-A-R. Some people spell it C H. You know, the, 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 the type of writer spells different. It's established in the East under King Bulan, B-U-L-A-N. He declares for Judaism and invites rabbins to settle in his dominions. By him, all religious religions are tolerated. His mildness gives security to his dynasty. It remains on the throne two centuries and a half. The Jews are said to promote a war against images. They are again treated with contempt. They continue to trade in slaves. Christianity favors universal freedom. Toulouse is said to have been given up to an invading enemy by Jewish treachery. They live peaceably under Pepin and Charlemagne. That's P-E-P-I-N and C-H-A-R-L-E-M-A-G-N-E. -E. Another Jew Jewish community remains to be noticed. If, say, Melman, their own writers deserve credit, at a period not very distant from this, the Jews in the East attained a still more eminent height of power and splendor. Judaism ascended the throne of a great kingdom on the west of the Caspian Sea, a kingdom before the strength of whom, of which the Persian monarchy trembled and endeavored to exclude its inroads by building a vast wall, the remains of which still excite the wonder of the traveler while the Greek Empire courted its alliance. The name of this realm was Khazar, K-H-A-Z-A-R. 
a r or kozar k h o z a r it was inhabited by a turkoman tribe so you see the ashkenazis are from turkish descent and if you also look in the lemorte de arthur they were fighting the christian hebrew israelites were fighting both the um the turks and the mohammedans or the saracens okay the name of this realm was Khazar or Khuzar. It was inhabited by a Turkoman tribe who had gradually abandoned their nomadic habits and maintained considerable commerce. Their capital, Bilangiar, B I L A N G I A R, was situate in the mouth of the Volga, and a line of cities stretched across thence to the Don. They exchanged dried fish, the forests of the north, and slaves for the gold and silver and the luxuries of southern climates merchants of all regions jews christians and mahometans were freely admitted and their superior intelligence over this more barbarous subjects induced one of their kings bulan around bc 740 to embrace the religion of the strangers bulan the legend tells was admonished to adopt this line of conduct by a messenger from heaven but he is said with equal probability to have instituted an inquiry that he might decide on the relative merits of christianity and its rival faiths dash judaism and mahometanism he acted if strangely very impartially to effect his purpose he caused the teachers of each to be severally brought before him when he proceeded to interrogate them after this fashion. Of the Christian, he demanded whether in his judgment the persuasion of the Israelites were not superior to that of the followers of Mahomet. The answer he received to this query, which probably had some reference to a supposed inclination on his part, was that the faith of the Jews was better than that of the Muslims. Of the Mohammedan, he inquired whether Judaism had not the claims to veneration superior to those of the Christ, of Christianity, and to this he obtained an answer in the affirmative. The occurrence of the Christian and the Mohammedan in favor of Judaism decided him to adopt the religion of the Jews. He accordingly embraced their faith and declared for the law of Moses and encouraged learned rabbins to establish themselves in any every part of his kingdom. King Bolan, having himself been embarrassed in his choice of a road to salvation when he had satisfied his own mind, did not expect that all mankind should be of the same opinion and share his conviction. It was indeed provided by law that the successor to the throne must be of Jewish persuasion, but Christian and Mahometans under his rule were indulged with free exercise of their religion. This wisdom or benevolence gave a solidarity to his power, which the boldest tyrants had been unable to secure. His dynasty remained on the throne for more than two centuries and a half. That's 250 years. They seemed to have lived in peace, and if they had not the fame of conquerors, they knew little of the calamities of war. This is evident for when Rabin Hasdai, a learned Hebrew who was much esteemed at the period last referred to by the Caliph Abdurrahman of Cordova first heard of Khozar, it was only through the Byzantine emperors that he gained a knowledge of the existence of this Jewish sovereignty and the Rabin though desirous of opening a communication with his brethren, could not immediately accomplish his object. He eventually succeeded, and King then occupied the throne of Bolan, whose name was Joseph, and to him Rabin as Dai addressed himself. The letter which he wrote is still preserved by the Jews, with the answer returned by Joseph. It is proper, however, to add that the whole story of this Jewish kingdom rests upon questionable authority by some writers it has been held to be unworthy of credence so this same has died 
And this same letter is in this book, The Thirteen Tribe, where Joseph the king provides his um, genealogy. So this is page 72. So the highlight of the reply to this is the story of the conversion already quoted. No doubt Joseph too employed a scribe for penning it notably, probably a scholarly refugee from Byzantium. Nevertheless, the reply sounds like a voice out of the Old Testament compared to the Polish cadences of the 10th century modern statesman. It starts with a fanfare of greetings, then reiterates the main contents of Asdai's letter, proudly emphasizing that the Khazar kingdom gives the lie to those who say that the scepter of Judah has forever fallen from the Jews' hands and that there is no place on earth for a kingdom of their own. This is followed by a rather cryptic remark to the effect that already our fathers have exchanged friendly letters which are preserved in our archives and are known to our elders. So this this star may refer to a 19, 9th century Jewish traveler, El Dad Hadanai, whose fantastic tales much read in the Middle Ages includes mention of Khazaria, which he says is inhabited by three of the lost tribes of Israel and collects tributes from 28 neighboring kingdoms. Eldad visiting Spain around 880 and may have and may or may not have visited the Khazar country. As that briefly mentions him in his letter to Joseph as if to ask what to make of him. It shows a sidelight on the frequent description of the Khazars as the people of Magog. Magog, according to Genesis 10, verse 2 to 3, was the much aligned uncle of Togarma. So Joseph, the um, Khazar king, gives his genealogy as follows. Th through a fierce Jewish nationalist, a proud wielding the scepter of Judah, he cannot and does not claim for them Semitic descent. So there it is. They're not Shemites. He traces their ancestry not to Shem, but to Noah's third son, Japheth, or more precisely to Japheth's grandson, Togarma, the ancestor of all Turkish tribes. We have found in the family registers of our fathers, Joseph asserts boldly that Togarma had 10 sons and the names of their offspring are as follows. Uyghur, Dorsu, Avars, Hans, Basili, Tarniak, Khazars, Zagora, Bulgars, Saber. We are the sons of Khazar, the seventh. Okay. So he said, after these events, one of his Bolan's grandsons became king. His name was Obadiah. He was a brave and very venerated man who reformed the rule, fortified the law according to tradition and usage, built synagogues and schools, assembled a multitude of Israel's sages, gave them lavish gifts of gold and silver, and made them interpret the 24 sacred books the Mishnah, precepts, and the Talmud, and the order in which the liturgies are to be said. So we'll go back to that, probably, if we have time. But you see that their trainers were the Israelites or the Jews, and most of those Jews were Torah only. So they didn't even teach them the whole Bible. They taught Talmud, Babylonian, um, elders stuff that they make up that's why you see the ashkenazi today they still don't know the bible and still don't practice it because they're not the children of israel the children of israel know the entire bible including the old testament the new testament the apocryphas the histories and so on so eventually he succeeded and the king then occupied the throne of bolan whose name was joseph and told him Rabbi Hazda addressed himself. The letter which he wrote is still preserved by the Jews, which the answer returned to Joseph. It is proper, however, to have the whole story 
if this Jewish kingdom rests upon questionable authority. So in the progress of the 8th century, the Jews suffered from the civil wars carried on by the caliphs. Those are the Muslims, but generally their religion experienced little serious molestation. Their seminaries of learning were respected and encouraged. About the year 770, the royal residence was removed by Abbas Safa, who is also called Abul Kabez, from Damascus to Kufa, a town distant some four days' journey from Baghdad, and situate on the Euphrates. The Jews are, by certain writers, represented to have possessed great influence in the iconoclastic emperors, the destroyers of images. They are also reported to have moved Caliph Yezid II of that name to make war on the images of the Virgin and the saints of the church in his dominions and to his premature death was supposed to be brought about by the prayers of the outraged saints. This made a deep impression on his son and successors. He lamented the impiety of his father and thought this was his duty to punish those who had been his advisors. Warned of their danger and the parties inculpated betook themselves to flight and it is added having paused to rest themselves near a fountain in Isauria, they saw a lad driving an ass laden with petty wares for sale and having steadfastly gazed on him they saluted him as their future emperor but strongly recommended his compliance with the second commandment you know the second commandment is no images right their anticipation was realized and the Isaurian youth advanced to the throne reigned by the name of Leo but became in the earlier part of his reign a persecutor of the Jews their wealth was seized and the more relentlessly as much of it was believed to have been procured from the fragrant the fragments of broken images to which their enemies had been accustomed to address their prayers. They gratified their avarice by remorselessly plundering the Hebrews pers and persuading themselves that in thus requiting their sacrilege, they performed an act of piety. The rest of their history at this period is confused and unsatisfactory. Alternately favored and persecuted, Constantine Copronymus and Nicephorus are mentioned as among those who joined to condemn and as far as might be put might be to put down idolatry, but little light is thrown on the general situation of the Jews. Okay. The materials for tracing their course in Italy are also scanty, as in earlier times, they were actively engaged in slave selling, which was often imputed with great wrath by the fathers of the church. So you see the Ashkenazi, they were all so always selling slaves. So we're going to go back now to some of the, the the Ashkenazi outline by religion okay so first and foremost let's go back to the Khazars where are the Khazars so you see the Khazar Kaganate so they're also in Josephus they were semi-nomadic Turkic people with a confederation of Turkic speaking tribes in the late 6th century Notice, people who use CE Common Era and a lot of the Ashkenazis control Wikipedia, they write in terms of Common Era. Real Jews, real Israelites, real Hebrew, real Christians, we don't write in terms of Common Era. We write in terms of Anno Domini, which is AD. And before Christ, it's BC or AM. So when you see BC, AM or AD, you're talking about real Christians. Because a lot of these Ashkenazis, they don't believe in Christ, so they make up their own terms. So don't use CE, use AD. And Adamani mean in the late year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So look at their languages. Their religion is Tengrism. Tengrism. Also known as Tengrism. Tengerism. 
or Tangerianism is a Central Asian religion characterized by shamanism, animism, totemism, poly and monotheism, and ancestor worship. It was the prevailing religion of the Turks, Mongols, Hungarians, Bulgars, Xiangzhou, and possibly the Han. So see, they're polytheists, okay? And you see it come out in their pushing of homosexuality, animism has to do with like the vegetarianism, they don't want people to eat meat, things like that, and um, idolatry. So their religion, Tengrism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, paganism, religious syncretism. So so look at the Kagan, their, their kings from the 618 to 628 was Tong, Yabgu and then from the 9th century Bolan that's when they started being converted after him they started taking Hebrew names Obadiah, Zachariah, Manasseh, Benjamin, Aaron, Joseph etc so you can see that they did convert because before that they didn't even have Hebrew names so bear in mind this religion of Tengri Zim that the, the Khazar um, practice you're going to see that the Ashkenazi practice the same thing, okay? By religion, religious Jews have main hagim customs in addition to halakha or religious law and different interpretation of law. Different groups of religious Jews in different graphic areas historically adopted different customs and interpretations on certain issues Orthodox Jews are required to follow the customs of their ancestors. See that? So they don't follow the Bible, they don't follow Jehovah, they don't follow Jesus Christ. And do not believe that they have the option of picking and choosing. So this is how you know they are not the children of Israel. Because the children of Israel worship Jehovah and Him only. And we can only worship Jehovah now through Jesus Christ. Because the Levitical priesthood has been abolished where we used to have to go and sacrifice for our sins. We don't need to do that anymore. Now we have to baptize and follow the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the ordinances, the judgments, and the faith of Jesus Christ. We have to follow the entire Bible, the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, the New Testament, including our history books that we have, like the book of Joshua, Josephus, Fox's book of the Martyrs. Eusebius, Jerome, and so on. So we follow the early church fathers and we follow the apostles and the prophets. We don't follow customs of um, their forefathers like these um, Ashkenazi do. For this reason, observant Jews at, find, at times find it important for religious reason to ascertain who their household's religious ancestors are in order to know what customs their household should follow. These times include, for example, when two Jews of a different ethnic background marry, when a non-Jew converts to Judaism and determine what customs to follow for the first time, or when a lapse or less observant Jew returns to traditional Judaism and must determine what was done with his or her family's past. In this sense, Ashkenazic refers to both family ancestry and to a body of customs binding on Jews of that ancestry. Reform Judaism, which does not necessarily follow these min hagim, did nonetheless originate from among Ashkenazi Jews. In a religious sense, an Ashkenazi Jew is any Jew whose family tradition and rituals follow Ashkenazi practice. Until the Ashkenazi community first began to develop in the early Middle Ages, the centers of Jewish religious authority were in the Islamic world at Baghdad, and Islamic Spain. So you see where they get their customs from? Not from the Bible, but from those um, that they recruited from Baghdad and Spain who were already anti-Christ. And so you have the Muslims also be anti-Christ in addition to the Israelis who have taken over the land and you know do all kind of degenerate things in the Holy Land. Ashkenaz Germany was also distant geographically that it developed a mihag of its own 
Ashkenazi Hebrew came to be pronounced in ways distinct from other forms of Hebrew. So they made up their own language, which is really a whole bunch of Yiddish and other language and dialects mixed together, not really like ancient Hebrew. In this respect, the counterpart of Ashkenazi is Sephardic. These are Jews from Spain and Portugal. Most of those were exiled. The real ones were exiled. They're in like Brazil now, the black ones, and Sao Tome and those countries. Since most of non-Ashkenazi Orthodox Jews follow Sephardic rabbinical authorities, whether or not they are ethnically Sephardic. By tradition, the Sephardic or Mizrahi woman who marries into an Orthodox or already Jew, already Ashkenazi, Jewish family raises her children to be Ashkenazi Jews. Conversely, an Ashkenazi woman who marries a Sephardi or Mizrahi man is expected to take on Sephardi practice and the children inherit a Sephardic identity through, though in practice, in many families, compromise. A convert generally follows the practice of the Beth Din that converted him or her with the integration of Jews from around the world in Israel, North America, and other places, the religious definition of an Ashkenazi Jew is blurring, especially outside Orthodox Judaism. Yeah, so their religion comes from their family traditions, and that comes from the Khazars. That's not biblical. So we're going to look at um, some of the, 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 the practices. So they do have the biggest homosexual parade in Israel because they're not Israelites. You know, the Bible talks about that. And Tel Aviv holds one of the most, one of the largest gay pride parades in the world. Israel's cultural hub sees around 200 people take to the streets to L celebrate LGBT rights in the Jewish state. Over 250,000 revelers flood Tel Aviv. This is Times of Israel. For Israel's biggest ever gay parade, Israelis and visitors celebrate freedom and tolerance at the 20th annual event of self-style most gay friendly. So when the most I said the worst of the heathen will occupy the, the, your lands, that's what you're seeing with those homosexual parades. You see that the they were slave traders in Josephus. And you see that there were slave traders in the Bible and that they went and recruited um, Hebrews to come and teach them. But the Hebrews that they recruited one from to teach them were Babylonian Talmudic Jews. And that's why they learned so many nonsense and sorcery. And you see that they were polytheists and they worship their ancestors, which they do to this day because they don't follow the Bible. So Ezekiel... 2713, we're showing some scriptures that have to do with the Ashkenazi, the Japhetites, the Edomites, the Romans, the Grecians. Javan and Tubal and Meshach, they were thy merchants and they traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. Joel 3 verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have he sold unto the Grecians that he may remove them far from their borders. So the Ashkenazis, the Grecians, the Caucasians, they were heavily involved in the transatlantic slave trade and it was the Israelites who were prophesied to go into slavery the ones that were disobedient based on Deuteronomy 28 so Deuteronomy 28 verse 48 that's been fulfilled therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee so that's what um happened to the children of Israel, to the real Hebrews. That did not happen to the Ashkenazis or to the Caucasians. Deuteronomy 28, 68 And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, the way of whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it again no more. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you. So the children of Israel, the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Negroes, they had to serve slavery. Nobody bought them out of it. The planters paid themselves in the Haitian Revolution. Haiti had to pay France, the whites, the British whites, they got paid. The Ashkenazi got paid. The Grecians, the Romans, they all got paid. Even to this day, we're still paying for things in 
Israel that Negroes work for. We have nothing to do with the Holy Cause, but we send money and pay. So that's what happens. Nobody has paid us for slavery. Nobody has paid us for the castles that they stole or Jerusalem, but they'll pay when Christ gives them the bill. You understand? Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So we're seeing now the decline of the Roman Empire and the children of Israel, the Negroes waking up, realizing that they need to return to righteousness because when they're righteous, you can say one prayer and them whole kingdom collapse. You understand? So righteousness is what healeth the nation. It heals the world. It heals global warming. It heals all the problems. So the children of Israel now are learning to be righteous again. So Genesis 10 verse 3, the sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz. So the Ashkenazi are the sons of Japhet. And Rifta and Togamar. Togamar, son of Gomer of the family of Japhet. And brother Ashkenaz. So Gomer and Ashkenaz are brothers and Rif, Rifat. Genesis 10 verse 3. His descendants became a people engaged in agriculture, breeding horses and mules uh, to be sold in Tyre. Ezekiel 27 verse 14. They were also a military people well skilled in the use of arms. Togarma was probably the ancient name of Armenia. Okay. So they migrated over time, just like, you know, the Israelites migrated. So German Ashkenazi. Ashkenaz means spreading fire in Hebrew. One of the three sons of Gomer, son of Japhet. Genesis 10 verse 3. We may probably recognize the tribe of Ashkenaz on the northern shore of Asia Minor in the name of Lake Ascanius and in Europe in the name of Scandia, Scandinavia. Noble considers that Ashkenaz is to be identified with the German race. That's Nelson Bible Dictionary. I noticed that German Hitler was the one who put the Ashkenazi into um, tribulation and they were of the same stock of people. But Hitler knew that they were not the real Jews and the real Jews were a black race. So in terms of military power, same name says spreading fire and they have a lot of firepower militarily. In terms of military power, Ashkenaz are ranked 17 in the earth. And you see we have like 200 and something countries in the earth. They're in the top 20. So Abadiah prophesied against them. None going to be left of the house of Esau because of what they have done to the earth and what they have done to the children of Israel. So they also appear in 1 Chronicles 1-5, to the sons of Japheth, Gopher, Gomer, Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal. And Meshach and Tiras in First Chronicles one verse sixteen, the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Rifta and Togarma. So you see the sons of Japhet, then Japhet's children, his grandson Ashkenaz. They're fulfilling these prophecy now. The Israelis, the Balfour Declaration, the capturing of the land in Israel, where the prophet said they're going to be parted the land, they're going to be robbing it, raping it, stealing it, destroying it. Is happening now okay so that's where you see Genesis 9 verse 27 God shall enlarge Japheth they have ruled the earth and the hurt is complaining so they can't say they didn't get their turn to rule so God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant okay so a lot of the Africans are their servants to this day because a lot of European colonies, they're still paying them tribute to this day. Okay. So Japheth is dwelling in the times of Shem now in the Holy Land. So all these scriptures that you see, prophecies go, they have to be fulfilled. But bear in mind that the Hebrews will remain the same till the end. The Most High says, Jacob shall not wax pale. And the Hebrews look just like the Israelites. They're a black race. Like the East, the Hebrews are the Israelites. They're like the Ethiopians. Amos 9 verse 7. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Have I not brought up 
Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaftor and the Syrians from Kir. So the Israelites, the ancient Israelites, they have woolly locks, woolly hair, nappy hair, braids, they wrap their heads. So you'll see their culture is way different from the whites or the Ashkenazis. Job 30, 30, my skin is black upon me and my bones burned with heat. When it says skin is black, that's what it means. Skin, the noun, and black, the description of the skin, and my bones are burned with heat. Some people say, oh, when your bones burn with heat, you turn white. That's not true. Ask the black women who have hot flashes if their bones don't burn with heat and if they're not still black. And anytime you see famine come, the skin's still black because the Ashkenazi were famished and they were still white. You understand in the pictures, they're still white, even though it shows that they were being starved. In Ethiopia, the Ethiopians were starving, they're still black. In Yemen, they show the color of the people still starving, they're still the same color. So you don't change your color if you're starving. So Lamentations 5 verse 10, our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Song of Solomon 5 verse 11, my head is of the most fine gold, his locks are bushy and black as raven. That's the only people who have that kind of hair and black skin and locks are Negroes. Song of Solomon 1 verse 5, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Kedar was one of Ishmael's son. And Kedar in Hebrew means dark skin. That's how black Solomon is. Okay. And Solomon was David's son and they were both Jews. So the real Jews are black to the end. Jeremiah 40 verse 2, Judah mourneth and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground and the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. So we can see our blackness in the earth because the Most High said he made us from dirt and our skin is black like the dirt or the earth. The Ashkenazi, they don't believe in Jesus Christ and they persecute Christians. Jesus Christ of Nazareth from the tribe of Judah is the king of the Jews and the Israelites. Luke 23 verse 38, and a superscription was also written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. So you can't be a Jew if you're not believing in Jesus Christ and you're not following Christ and the apostles and the prophets and the laws before because they all prophesied of Christ. In Deuteronomy it says, Do not set up one of another nation to be king over thee. That includes all Negroes should not put nobody, no good for nobody from another race to be king over you. So Jesus Christ is the king of all the Negroes and the children of Israel and the Christians and the Hebrews. So if you don't follow Christ, you're not a Jew, period, because Christ is a Jew. He's the Jew of Jews. Israelites have a covenant with Christ, the King forever. Psalm 2, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, and Christ is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Who are the Israelites? To whom pertain it the promise? Romans 9 verse 4, the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law, the service of God and the promises. How do we serve God? We praise, we teach. We set up the earth and make sure they have biblical righteous laws. And we speak out against the generosity and sin and unrighteousness. So that's the covenant that the Most High has with the children of Israel to be righteous and to teach the earth righteousness. The Bible said there shall be no sodomite of the sons of Israel or no whores of the daughters of Israel. So the people who promote in those things in the earth, they're not children of Israel. So wolves, raven, the flock, eugenics, media, medical experiments, police brutality, theft of identity and the homeland of Jerusalem, slavery, the southern poverty, law center, sterilization, etc. So the people who are talking about policing anti-Semitism, they're not even Semites, they're Japhetites. So you can't be a Semite and a Japhetite at the same time. Either you're going to be one or the other. And Japhet... The most I don't have any covenants of everlasting rulership with him, but he does with the children of Israel. So the Southern Poverty Law Center and those places, they are run by Edomites, Grecians, Romans, and Ashkenazi to 
harassed and um, oppressed the children of Israel or the Israelites or the Negroes today. And you see it everywhere in every country where they are. Isaiah 11 verse 6, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. So a lot of those are wolves. They devour the lamb wherever they go. In Argentina, a lot of the Ashkenazi or the Edomites or the Caucasians, when they went there, all the Negroes disappeared. So they wiped them out. Same thing in Brazil. Same thing in every country where they went. We were expelled worldwide. And they took over our lands and took over everything. They sacked Jerusalem. A lot of the, 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 the treasures of Jerusalem are in England because we had to flee England and flee Europe and flee Spain and flee Portugal and flee the East and flee everywhere. Everywhere we go, they're behind us with degeneracy. And that's why you see the prophecy of Obadiah has gone out against them. Because we can't live in peace no matter what. So John 10 verse 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, see it the wolf coming and leave it the sheep and flee it. And the wolf catch it them and scatter it the sheep. So that's what they do. They go into the churches and they spread degeneracy. The tabernacles of Edom. Are listed in Psalm 83 as one of the enemies of Christ and the children of Israel. You have the synagogues of Satan listed in Revelation 2 verse 9, Revelation 3 verse 9. They're the enemies of Christ. So the synagogues of Satan, al Aska Mosque, the many idolaters, atheists, unbelievers, Turks, Saracens in the holy place will lead to the final battles. That's why the, 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 the prophecy says, in Ezekiel 7 verse 4, they are fulfilling verse 24. Wherefore, I'll bring the worst of the even, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pump of the strong to seize, and their only places shall be defiled. So they have the biggest gay parade in there. They have all those pagan masks and so on. That's fulfilling Ezekiel 7.24 in the holy places. And it says, Revelation 20 verse 8. Remember, Revelation 13 has to do with also the Catholic Church, the Muslims, and also the synagogue of Satan separately. They all go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is at the stand of the seashore. So you have Revelation 20, Revelation 13 that covers these people. Zechariah 9 verse 6, it's there fulfilling that to a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. So Christ it is that will gather the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Not the Balfour Agreement, not the Israelis. Notice they have a lot of converts to Judaism in their lands. And they do a matriarchal um, breakdown, which the Israelites of the Bible is a patriarchal society. And we don't follow customs of the heathen or our forefathers. We follow the Bible as the Most High gives it to us. Isaiah 11 verse 11 and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Patros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Amath and from the islands of the sea. Notice the Israelites control most of the islands worldwide. In the Caribbean alone that's more than 7,000 islands. The most I knows where we are. You don't have Ashkenazi controlling as many countries or have a bigger diaspora as the Negroes, so they can't be the children of Israel. The children of Israel cannot be counted for numbers. They ne were never in Assyria, they were not in Egypt, they were not in Pastures, they were not in Kush, Elam, or Shinar. The Ashkenazi weren't there, but the children of Israel were, and the children of Israel are the Negroes. So, another scripture is Christ is going to separate the sheep from the goats. Do not call your children kid. It's satanic because the goats have to do with Satan and the sheep have to do with the children of Israel. So when you call your kid, your child a kid, you're calling them a satanic thing because kids are baby goats. So the children of Israel are sheep. Matthew 25, 32, and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. So we are children of Israel and we call our children children. We don't call them kids because the goats 